What would be like your symbol? Like Michael Jordan has his like air air pump. <laughs> yeah. Oh, didn't think about that one yet. Gotta come up with one. At the open source it. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. All right. So man, we're valued at four point five million dollars already, man. Love it. Yeah, for just the home though. Just, just the, home. the home. That's it. Beyond that, billions, billions. I mean, what did you did you read the whole report? What did you think? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's um, uh, I think it's a good document for study of the kind of like the whole system. I think there's a, uh, regarding the specifics of the the model. I think there's a little bit of inaccuracy. Like, I think the thing that we want to push through is that uh, they were talking a lot about that, like the modular homes, but it's really side build. I mean, so that's that's kind of yeah, th that's that. Um, the suggestions on potential potential foundations for Brian, if Brian wants to go s take a stab at it. Uh, so it's a it's a good record of kind of what we're doing. Beyond the, I mean, I would like to see strat like the execution parts. I think it's some it's hard for somebody remotely to really look at the details of execution mm -hmm. and all that. But beyond that, uh, hopefully the the students had you know it was fun for them to study it. Yeah. What about your okay. thoughts? I think it's useful. I mean, um, to me, the biggest takeaways were prioritizing resources and efforts. So they were really big on, like, we got to prove yeah. the concept yeah. first. Yeah. Um, like everything hinges on that, and so um, yeah. I before we jump into it too much, I have some updates from my meeting with Courtney Wills at MCC. Hmm. I have some questions, like I think we should answer. Um, so like that's where I'm sitting. Yeah. But I want to yeah. hand it over to the group to see if anything's hot with you guys. First. Um. Laid back as a dead fly as normal. Laid lay back as a dead fly. <laughs> Is that like a Polish expression? Uh, yeah. No, no. I picked it up in you just made that up? Yeah, that sounds that sounds Missouri. <laughs> it sounds more Missouri than Poland. Um Well, I mean if nobody has anything movie. on the top of their mind, I can yeah. jump into it. I mean, yeah. you know. Yeah. Okay. All right, so MCC. Uh I think the main takeaway here is this is a great opportunity for uh, getting the apprenticeship off the ground. So like this, they're they're not aligned with a yet a like they're not envisioning a full scale education experience that that we essentially have quality control over. Um, yeah. What they what they do right now, and and, and it, there's a time component to this, which is. If we can get something off the ground by July 2023, they have grant funding to support the program. Um, they're looking to extend that to 2024, but it's not guaranteed. And the way the program works, is, and, and what they, what they, their current model is, employers send their employees to them for the related training instruction component of the apprenticeship. So through MCC. Um, they basically go up to an employer and they say, if you get your employees to come to us for additional instruction outside of work hours, it's fully funded. They don't have to pay anything. Oh, yeah. And um, they will graduate at the end of their training program with this apprenticeship certification. So, like, we help you get certified with the Department of Labor because mm -hmm. we're an educational institution. And... Um, um, they like have an app so that if you don't have a curriculum or like whatever your curriculum is, the students can track their progress in OJT like while they're at, at work on this app. And so like that we're strictly an apprenticeship realm. So like the way the GI Bill would work in that sense is exactly how we started out, which is hmm. the money gets paid directly to the veteran who's employed by OSD. And then we work out some program where like over that two year period, we carve out chunks of time where they go into Kansas City or to like one of the MCC campuses. They take classes in welding or machining or like whatever the hell they want to. And then they come back and they're still technically our employees. 
So um, that's the model. I think it's a great, um, they solve a huge problem for us actually, once we have the infrastructure, which is the related training instruction requirement. So like if they take that off our plate, then OSC can focus strictly on the like applied learning, building shit, collaboration, open source, you know, like you, you don't have to worry about like teaching ACDC electronics basically. Um, and like as this evolves into a more comprehensive educational experience, mm-hmm. we can phase that out. But that's that's where we sit with with Courtney. So I told her I was going to like bring it to the group. Once we have a decision on funding, I can give her a more realistic timeline. But like I would consider that relationship solid and they're ready to go when we are. Hmm. That's interesting. So what's so you mean funding like what's the government's role in that? They pay MCC. They have grant funding and that pays for the expense of hosting classes. So it's essentially like the tuition. Because apprenticeships are not a degree producing program, like the, it gets complicated because like you can roll this into, you can accrue credits as a part of the apprenticeship that then count towards a degree. But what the, what the grant funding does is it, is it covers MCC's costs for instructing apprentices in a classroom environment. So like pay, it covers the teacher's salary and the materials they need to teach the class. They can also write into that expense report or how, like however they get the funds. Like if we have to provide temporary lodging, if we have to pay for transportation between the OSE campus and MCC um, or other things to facilitate students getting there so they don't have to pay out of pocket, there's also money for that. Um, yeah. How many credits then, would, the, would the students get? It's up to us. Like, we, there's a lot of flexibility. So we would be, you know, and it, the she's going to send me a the list of currently offered courses, but if we come to them with a sufficient number, like 24, let's say, we can, in theory, create our own package of courses or options for students. But who teaches and, them the, just, just from existing staff at MCC? Yeah, but there... that's not that's not a you know like like you could you know come in and serve as a lecturer if you wanted to and like their their curriculums are not um, super restrictive because it's not even a degree program. So it's entirely dependent on relationships that we have with the instructors and the administration. So it's not a degree program. So it's basically they, how do they frame it? They frame it as an apprenticeship. This is an apprentice. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is. There are people out in the workforce who are currently getting paid by employers, and we're going to uh-huh. upskill them by providing education outside of class and give them this apprenticeship certification. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Did y'all talk about the money flow of like shared revenue 50 50? So, under the apprenticeship model, there's no, there's no revenue. Like, we, like OSC is sending their apprentices are technically employees so they like under our apprenticeship model the theory is that we're producing revenue from the homes and the gvcs we, we out of that revenue we pay the apprentices to be a part of this program and they're technically employees and then the grant funding simply covers the mcc expense of teaching the related training instruction is uh, is the federal government involved in the apprentice the gi bill part which is uh, supporting the the vet as in a regular apprenticeship yes yeah so so, so consider there. yeah consider them like pre gi bill approved now like technically we would OSC would still have to get approved as a gi bill certified employer because that's that's where the flow of money is going to come like we get approved as the employer uh we hire an eligible veteran as an apprentice and they get enrolled through us. And so then the money flows from the VA to the veteran apprentice and MCC doesn't, you know, have anything to do with that. When like the previous, like when we were workshopping the, the partnership before our last call, there were like, that was in the realm of education. So like, that's a completely different animal in which people who are attending OSC as students and, and would be paying us tuition that's where the revenue share would come in. And the GI Bill would also apply to that, 
it would just the money would come to OSE and MCC as the tuition providers. So on the table, to, is there any other education route discussion on the table, or that's completely different? That's it, it would be a yeah, it would be with a different component of MCC. So Did the you person bring that I stuff up, or or, or that was yeah. Well, it, it wasn't her. Like she runs the apprenticeship program. Hmm. Yeah. Were you were you going to have another discussion regarding the education part, or because that at that point it starts starts sounding like we were talking about before the 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 tech school collaboration that I passed on to you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like it, it in terms of the like education model, I'll bring that up with her the next time I meet, and then that'll just be a connection to whoever she works with at MCC that can that makes those decisions. But wow. it's actually much more straightforward under that under that model, and you know, um, rev like revenue share for tuition could be as simple as like they would have to be negotiated, obviously. But like for in the case of the GI Bill, the money would have to go to the certified provider. So they would like of the two of us, even if we're splitting 50-50 time was in front of students, we're not certified as a GI Bill eligible eligible institution. And so the, the GI Bill tuition payments would go to MCC and then we would have to recoup that value somehow through them. Yeah, that would be the agreement. So the, the concept was what, what could that agreement look like? I don't know if you can push that discussion forward. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I, I mean, I can. Yeah, I think <clears throat> something yeah. to talk about now. We kind of said we'll table that for later because we're not, not there yet. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So, bottom line, on uh, what are the benefits of this? So, basically, we involve MCC. They get some of this, these other courses, which could be good. Um, is it restricted well, to to the the kind of curriculum we laid out for auxiliary learning, or could it be other things? Like, for example, here is web design. It can be whatever we want to. Like, their interest is not pushing a specific mm -hmm. class or curriculum. Their interest is just getting butts in seats. Yeah. Like they, they look really good right now because Missouri is like number two in the nation for like number of apprentices, apparently, that's what she says. Oh yeah. Um, so the more that they can, and like when we started talking, like, you know, basically we're ahead of the curve in terms of industry. So they like, like enterprise and, and industry generally are lagging in their response time to this labor shortage. But like mm -hmm. everybody is trying to solve the same problem, which is the apprenticeships are great solution to uh, in terms of like skilled trade shortage and labor shortage and underemployment. So like mm -hmm. the general trend is moving towards how do we get more people into apprenticeships? Okay. And they're getting less restrictive on like, oh, you have to, like in order to call that you have to take electronics or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But so, in <clears throat> yeah. So the intuition that it was a good partnership is validated by your experience yeah absolutely i mean they're even even if the quality of the the education isn't good at the end of the day we're dealing with a an accredited institution who is excited to work with us who is flexible about like all of the things that we care about like quality of instruction how we structure it like you know all, all of those things so I, I absolutely think there's a lot of potential there mm -hmm. um which then goes into my sort of like next, actually before I go any further, does anybody else want to jump in? Just that like, last time we talked, we said we were going to table this one. So what are we, are we going to, are we going to start pursuing it now or what's the Oh, plan? no, 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 like oh, this all is different. Not I this mean, like specific this, one. This all, like I'm just providing you like I'm thinking long term. So this all assumes that we have infrastructure and apprentices. Yeah. yeah. No action required now. Right. Okay, but great. it's the same thing as as uh, promoting the apprenticeship route, not exploring the education route. That's a, that's effectively. If we talk about before we had the discussion, here's the apprenticeship route through GI Bill. Here's the education route through GI Bill. Education route was was what we're trying to negotiate. Right now, John is negotiating actually the apprenticeship route. Yeah, I, I would say more fact finding than anything, but like, it, it, I don't think we know have enough information to say like apprenticeship 
first or education first. I think we're, we're like, in terms of sequencing, the proving the model and building infrastructure is still kind of in. We yeah. have a lot of data collection there. And I think both are still on the table potentially. We just get more attractive to MCC as a collaborator, the more established we become. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so the, I guess the next thing is sequencing. So, I mean, I, the la one of the last emails I saw from you, Martin, was mm -hmm. uh, uh, talking about the first batch of houses um, like I just want to make sure we're all on the same page that like we're a pilot like we envision a pilot house or like a pilot project or an MVP before you know a, yeah a bunch of them it right, would be okay. like one one two maybe one two four but I see right. probably three sessions of house builds where that's when we when we go out for the apprenticeship route, we know we say to students, "Hey, we know how to make money with this. We proved the model. We we built it. We built it again. We built it again, and that's where we have to be. So that's that's in store. And the idea, the the negotiation there is what exactly are we proving each time, and how many times are needed. I'm seeing kind of three as a nominal number. I'm envisioning absolutely one the first time because. You know, one easy. Um, then that proves that we can build. Then replicate that. So the logic is either replicate that just straight, or add something to it, something new. Like what are we proving by doing it again? Well, we're proving that once again we can build on schedule. Maybe there's some refinements of the actual build that maybe it didn't go as well in the first run. Maybe we didn't miss some marks for speed or logistics we would correct that so it makes sense to go from one to one possibly from like if we're if we're really good on the first one and we show that everything went as expected we probably want to do a couple because the model revolves around doing several at the same time because mm -hmm. of the because of the logistic the issue like if we build in kansas city the delays on inspection schedules and stuff so if we're working multiple houses at a time we're able to kind of accommodate even if we have uh, long delays like three days or four days or whatever. Right. So that's the idea. Um, so what are we gaining after two sets of builds? Well, probably at that time it might, might be worthwhile to talk about now. Maybe we get some back-end infrastructure as in, okay, here's a person managing the logistics perhaps material sourcing or basically a construction manager. It might be a time to consider involving a person like that but before we go out into the the apprenticeship we definitely want to know we can deliver the product we can that we can get the necessary economics out of it and then we have an organization like some organizational support to make sure that can happen consistently on predictable schedules so that's before the apprenticeship uh, in other words once we I want to I want to get 24 people that's that's the goal because with that, that gets us to the, I mean, just to review why 24, well, at 24, you're converting that process from a long, laborious, drawn-out process, what typically is six months in the industry, now we're saying five days, so it's actually inspiring and fun, right? So <laughs> that's the reason, including for me, like, I'll do it. Um, five days, is it just goes, and it's like, before you know it, it's extremely rewarding. That's been an experience like building this house here, so... We want to push for that social production model where people actually see, hey, hey, this is actually cool, you know. So, so we're appealing to trying to kill as many birds with one stone here. And I mean, just making a 10x or 100x better product because um, that's what we would need to do to to really succeed and and have a significant impact. So, yep. I just wanted to that. confirm. I, I want to confirm. I wasn't reading uh, something into that. Yeah, that wasn't there. Um, so I mean, if that's the case, then is Brian still one of the first potential clients? It depends on the situation, but the thing is, uh, here's the idea: like, when we have 24 people, that means we're going to be knocking out houses one after another on a, on a two 
right now the general idea was a two week schedule. One week we're building, the next week we're studying. So the students are, uh, the idea there was an initial proposal or, or, or the core enterprise model. So we're basically doing production and education and the education part so that we're actually moving forward on the capacity of the team to design and build both improve the housing and then get into the other supporting infrastructure like say the tractor or aquaponics or whatever or the CEB version of the house because right now we're we're not accounted for having the capacity to do that so we're building it all up we're saying oh we're actually going to start our school to develop the talent to make it happen so we we have a house every two weeks that means regular builds and what's a scalable model that can sustain that? To me, the scalable model is putting the house on the market. So we, get, we go through the whole process where we get land and up to the sale of the house in a replicable scenario so that when we get the students, we're running on a, not on a one-off model, but on a model that can scale as much as we need to. Because ideally, we want to go with the after the first year of building, say we build uh, say 12 houses in the first year, that, that's the idea. So after six months, we're gonna build 12 more houses. So one every two weeks, that's 24 weeks, half a year. Uh, so the clients have to be there. So with the economics, so, so what's it look like? So the economics are getting the land, uh, doing the whole build and putting it on an open market. Now we can consider what if in Brian's case uh, works out for the first one in that, um, but the question would be are we proving the economic model that's necessary to sustain the actual um, paying the students like once once the six month part starts? Like is that actually showing the economics? Um, are we achieving I, I thought by it, three I thought builds? Brian's I thought Brian's house was going to be like one of the pilots. I don't. I don't want to speak for you, Brian. Like. Yeah. The question is. I think the bigger question is what's. How do we get? If we're going to get the. Yeah, it's a pilot. I mean, any, anything we do for the first time, you can call it a pilot. Um, if it is. If it is. If that's the one we're building, then it has to continue. It has to have be the quickest way, to which we're getting the app apprenticeship started. So is that consistent with it? Well, uh, I mentioned in the first bill, we proved that we can build it under real conditions. So the conditions have to be as real to the market as possible. So the, definitely the inspection schedule is the five day thing. Yeah, if we can fit it all in there, we can, we can definitely consider it. So it could be, but it doesn't have to be. I, um, it depends on uh, exactly what's happening at the time. Right, right now, um, I think that discussion starts when we're saying, okay, when are we ready to get land? Are we doing a build in the wild? Are we building one for, for Brian? What is the situation? How does it meet our goals? Do you see the difference between... Um, you got you to understand, Marchin, that I have a reputation and I'm made a partnership with you and then I go out to the world and I make a deal or make a partnership or try and bring it back to you and I don't, I need you to, I would like for you to understand the context outside of OSE a little bit in order to understand that I feel like I'm vouching for you and being really generous and saying you need, you need a customer to build a house inside city limits for the first time. Who's going to be that first customer that's going to, that's going to be okay with I mean, I feel like I'm taking a lot of risk, and then you're, and I'm willing to, you know, buy a house from you, and it's, you're not even sure if you want to sell me one, and I need to make a decision personally in the next six months. If you're not going to, if I can't buy a house in the next six months, then I need to, from you, then I will buy a different house. Well, I mean, I, I was trying to help you out and, you know, kind of be a, a prototype showcase in the city. I don't really feel that you kind of, it, it's it's weird, you know, it's like, um, it's a little weird that, um, but I, you know, I went and talked to all these nonprofits and got potentially all this land donated and I, I can't, I'm trying to, 
I feel like that's an opportunity, just like MCC. I, I went and got an opportunity, brought it back, and now you're understanding that it is a real opportunity. Um, so I have several lots that has some serious grading that I think we can build on. They're open for us to build on, but I need, it, it's like, we'd have to recruit five people to, you know, commit two weeks. I mean, that's gonna be part of the deal. I don't know how much we can prove at once. So I guess I'm trying to figure out for my own self and my own family, is this a viable option for me? <laughs> As a, someone who's trying to stick his neck out for you, it doesn't seem like you really care that much. So maybe I should move along <laughs> and figure something else out. And that's all. I, I thought that I was being generous and trying to help out and validating it because I believed in you. But I don't just don't feel like you you get that I'm doing that or you value it at all. And so that's kind of where I'm at on it. Is like I'm. Somebody has to be the first coach to me. Nobody wants to be that person. So, it, you want to sell it on the open market? Then I'd say, just take the. We can take that lot and do that on it, and yeah, I don't need to I mean, be part of it. But well, the lot needs the opportunities that I'm bringing needs communication and it needs like direct responses, you know, because. Um, you know, I have I'm I'm talking about you and promoting what you're talking about, and I need to be able to like when we show up for the look at the land. Y y you don't you say that grading is not an issue, but great this is like a really serious grading issue. I'm so not saying it's not an issue. I'm saying we we do our own grading typically. Yeah. So this will need. I I just don't know if we all know what we're getting ourselves into on this one. Well, okay, so the first thing is, since since we began the discussions on building for you, there's new information that came in. The, the critical piece of information is that we can't get an inspection on any kind of a predictable time scale in, in, in Kansas City. So we found out, well, it cannot. So while it says on a, on a website that they get back to you within 24 hours, we talk to a person who's a contractor in Kansas City, and he tells us that the typical time is three days. So that, that's the first thing, and that's that kind of makes a build in Kansas City, according to the model, really difficult, because how are we going to get a bunch of people to do the, do the swarm if then you got to break it up effectively into like two pieces? Because we're expecting to be paying people to be doing the first build. Or, uh, in general, we want to make the conditions as, as lifelike as possible. So we're actually saying we are proving this business model. It's a business model Then we can say, now we got our apprentices on, we're not guessing whether, whether we're going to have a customer. So that has so to you're happen. You're only going to go to jurisdictions that have... I don't think that you're going to get a better response time in other jurisdictions. I think that's just the way that the... The law is in the sort of well, permits. Well, I mean, it, it may be, but it doesn't appear to be like in, uh, we checked up with St. Joe, for example, and there they say that they, uh, when we emailed them, they said that they can get, get to you, like when you call them up either the same day or within, or on the next day. So it depends. It completely depends on the jurisdiction. And, and then you have to say, well, that's part of the, the tricks we have to do here. Now, this is not an issue once we're fully cranking, right? Because we build multiple houses, and if they don't get to one house uh, at the right schedule, we, we just work on another. So that's that issue goes away. But there are, I mean, there are some real practical considerations. Once you say, okay, uh, the rubber is going to hit the road, and all of that. So I think the, the framework to to think about here is it, it's not like I mean, I don't, not like I don't appreciate what you're trying to do, but it's it's there's rollout and sequencing. Like, how do we get there? In practice, it, it means that, well, if it doesn't work now, it, it may work later, or it can work now, perhaps. I don't know. But all the issues, including the grading, like what's the quality of the site, what are the buildings next to it, like what's underneath, is there trees next to it, whatever. I mean, that's all part of it. Well, uh, the reason why that one lot we looked at didn't was a no-go is because we would have to do a street cut, the one, the really nice one that we went out there. And a street cut means more than $10,000 of outsourced work. We couldn't even get, I mean, we, we didn't get to the place that we even got a quote, but it's more than $10,000. So it's like, okay, uh, maybe next time, next one. 
it's probably like 10 30 whatever i mean that's getting to serious thing where they're blocking up traffic cutting actually cutting on through the concrete the the pavement on the road you have to cut like out the pavement to like deal with like the utilities yeah you would have to go to actually to the opposite side of the street uh through the the blacktop so so that was a complete no-go um i mean just in terms you're not of, so excited about kansas city because it takes three days for a response well that's that's the main thing and that's prove your model around five days build yeah so that delays you to five six seven or, eight days i mean five or at least as close to it because that's assuming that everything works as planned like uh, even with the five days, if you have, there's that three day there, but what if we have to redo something or there's another inspection that doesn't go, then you're talking three, six, nine days. I was just reading about like delays. Probably going to happen. You should probably expect for something like that to happen. And it could, and it, and it may well, may well. And, and in which case our scenario is once again, this all goes away when we have our people. Why are we struggling here is because we're trying to call in 24 people because we know how difficult it is to get a whole bunch of people to show up at once. So that's 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 just the facts. So we have to work with that. And we didn't know that when we were uh, beginning our discussions initially. So. Um, I my, my gut here is that um, these problems are not equally important so like it, i i think it would be a, it'd be terrible to lose the opportunity of that brian's presenting if for no other reason because find like getting a house regardless of it's like the exact model just yeah. getting a house out in public is so valuable and i think we can get creative about building in contingencies for delayed timeline like i agree with brian it's going to happen it's not going the first bill is not going to happen in five days but you already have a pretty good model for how to occupy people. Uh, you know, like there's so much shit to do that if we have the funds and we sell it right and attract the right people, I don't see a reason why uh, we can't figure out something productive to do in yeah. the meantime. Um, yeah. And like more importantly, like, <clears throat> well, yeah, I, I guess I'll just leave it there. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm saying that anything's a go but i'm just saying i'm not saying it's going to be one way or the other but when the rubber hits the road we're actually making a decision we have to weigh all of this because uh the thing is this is beautiful if we have 24 people we have the apprenticeship i now have here 24 people that can come out there it doesn't matter if it takes us five consecutive days it could be one right. one day today one day next week because we're here and we can travel but if but right now, if we're going to get a crew, still to, to compress the actual build time to those five days, because that makes it lean and extremely efficient. That's how we know I am very confident we can make a good, good enterprise out of that when we can do that. It's breakthrough. Nobody does that. Only people that do that are modular housing people who actually ship the factory built homes onto a site. And we're saying, well, hey, we're actually going to uh, do that all from scratch. So. Um, the concept right now was we're going to get a whole load of people, but we're paying them. And in order to get as many as 24 at one time, we were saying we're paying them good money, like 50 bucks. So we guarantee they show up, but that means they're there. We can't pay them for like 10 right. days of that. That would what? add another 50 K to the budget. I get like what for, for the, for Brian's benefit, like what are the conditions that need to be met before you can yeah. give we can start looking at sites serious and considering all these factors. Is it documentation well, still? Yeah, yeah. I mean, right Just now. Just to give you a hint, I'm kind of treading water with my contact in this lot, and there's not only one lot, but there's the potential to have maybe the you know an entire like half acre of like a whole neighborhood essentially is what they have. Yeah. The grading is an issue, but the neighborhood is not built. It could be built. Um, or I could do a conservation easement on it and just turn it back to nature. I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing with it. And I think that I could have a house there, or it could be not my house. It could be the house for the market. But they might have some conditions. Yeah, and all those details are very important. Us. Yeah. They're, they're talking about gifting us this land. 
that's on 30th Street in Kansas City. It's if they're gifting it, then probably, likely, it's not a thing where they're going to say, oh, you can sell it on the market, though there is a chance because the price, yeah. you're saying what? I think that, yeah, they they it would have to meet some sort of affordable housing kind of yeah. gut check. Yes, and, and we can probably do that. As far as affordable housing, when we looked on Zillow and things like that, things that are competitive what with us, we found one which we kind of got scared because, hey, they're selling a house at the same price we are. It turned out it was a subsidized house. So, yes, we we probably could qualify on that. I don't know. We have to look at the numbers. What are the, their numbers? So maybe that's the thing. You can take a look at it. Okay, can we put... Because that house we found on Zillow was actually an op market on on an open market, but it was an affordable house. It said you can only buy this house if you don't make a lot of money. So yeah. um, maybe that's possible. So maybe maybe next step would be, okay, find out if that lot would, would qualify for that based on the current cost structure if you put it on an open market. Well, I, so let, let, I would like more information from you about what, uh, what John's question before, you know, because I'm, I feel like I'm, yeah, I would like to kind of have more information because I'm, yeah, again, like I feel like I'm kind of out there making good relationships and contacts, but I don't have enough information about you and what you're willing to do and when. And I, I need to be able to trust that enough to like make that my home or somebody else's home. Like it's, it, it's just like kind of like the trust thing. I want to know kind of where you're at with the with the requirements around a Kansas City build, because that's what I thought okay. was one of our main goals was a to have a house in a city. Yeah. That's vetted by you know, and then you can then you have. I don't know. I thought I was. I thought it was all part of the deal, but maybe I'm. I miss. I, I don't no, know. No, it is. But the question is one. Well, um, it's for me, for I kind of want to buy, I, I want to get out of my apartment and into a house, you know, in yeah. the next six months. So, um, so here's the model right now. So we also just do it for anyone. I don't, it doesn't have to be for me. It yeah. could, we could still do that deal if it wasn't for me, but I also would like to know personally because it's a big, it's a major life decision. And I was, I thought, I, I thought you would be more thrilled than kind of like, the way well, it is, you know, like that's well, not like the, the kind of customer. That's not the relationship that I would want you to have with any of your other customers, because it's you have to you have to walk and talk and be a certain way around that. And like, I don't see you selling any houses if this is like the customer front experience. You know, it's like you got to make people feel like taken care of, that they trust you, that they're you know everything's going to be okay, very responsive, and that's. That's a whole nother, that's the other side of the business is that kind of, you know, bedside manner kind of behavior. Like, cause they're, they're, they're most expensive, um, you know, asset in their life is going toward to you. Well, the thing is we're running on incomplete information. So as soon as we find new things, we adapt, but here's yeah. the, Here's the model what we see right now. When we started this game, materials were 35. Right now, materials are more like 60. Wow. So when we did the, this was one and a half years before those spikes and, and it's weird. Like for example, a bath, bathtub shell was 275, now it's 550. I mean, things like that, it's just crazy. No control for that. So, so take about, my estimation right now is 60. You got labor which is 25 or 50. It's 50 to be sure for the first one. Later, well, it might cost 25, but right now I'm a budgeting 50, uh, 50 bucks an hour times 1,000 hours. That's, that's the number. And then you got land, you got all the legal utility connections, which can be quite variable. And then if we're actually making a business out of it, the, the standard contractor uh, charge is like 20 percent or something, so that whatever that adds adds up to, it could be from a minimum of 
So la between labor and materials, you've got 110. In the model where we're buying the labor at 50 bucks. Now, if you can show me, okay, yeah, we're going to get 24 people for free. Yeah, we, you know, stuff like that. Every every one of those costs has to be accounted for. Um, is it going to be a nightmare to actually connect to the sewer or the electricity at that given lot? Is a street cut required or anything like that? Is there an impact fee? Like the fee that they just charge you for, for what, whatever. So well, I mean, what, you're, you're talking about due diligence for land, which is a step that has to happen only when we're ready, right? Like, and and what I'm getting at here is, I think, I think this whole conversation is moot until March, and you're in a position to say, like, I'm comfortable with where the documentation is, where I can start handing it yeah, to I think, the crew, right? I really think so. And, it is that. So yeah. So so then the I think the. I think success with this conversation then is if you can just give us a realistic idea of like what conditions have to be met for you to feel like you're in that spot. Is it is six months seem like a realistic timeline? And if not, it might help Brian just to let him know that. If it is a realistic timeline, then like maybe we should make that a goal. Well, um, how do we look at our, our critical path again? So the steps that have to take place for that is completion of the CAT. So right now I'm doing a, actually putting all the electrical in CAT and doing that, I'm actually doing the part which was kind of supposed to come after the plans were submitted, but I'm really doing that now, which is like detail of build procedure. So, um, I, mean, I, I think, I think however you think it needs to be done, makes sense like it nobody has more information about than you do about the best way to do it and so like the, i think the question is really just like what's realistic yeah what's realistic um so let's look at history and see what what this looks like i mean we were gonna finish the house um by february showing no not yet uh the exterior is actually finished right now completely but the interior needs to be done so there's that uh my estimate would be a month of build time on that, but there's before that there's the CAD part, uh, CAD and and procedures, because what's happening right now is as like the CAD's taking me forever, because because it's a shitty program. I'll just say it. No, that's not the reason. <laughs> what's a shitty program? <laughs> Okay. No, the cat not a program that would be better. Uh, what are you trying to say? I don't know. Keep going. <laughs> no, no, the thing that takes a long time uh, is the part of going between. Okay, here's here's the cat. Like, I, don't know. I, I believe just, you. If you say if you say it's tough and it takes a long time, like I believe you. <laughs> it takes a bit of time. Let me just show you an example of what I mean. Um, we'll make you a co-host. Maybe Marchin's uh, Michael Jordan is him with the... With well, this the, is the kind of... <laughs> on the Zoom. <laughs> I'll put that on my shoe. <laughs> No, I mean, I, I don't enjoy that. I don't enjoy it, how much it, time it takes. Um, but let's see. I'm sure you don't. So, so you're, gonna, you're showing us? So, okay, so that's actually like, man, this is, um, well, it's not, you know, it's got some missing pieces, but it's, this is like, this isn't bullshit cat. It's actually like accurate where like everything is going to go for, uh, say, plumbing, right? But this is not including like framing and stuff. This is actually in various ways, and I don't know if you can, you, without knowing build, like you can't really say how optimized it is, but this is actually quite optimized and all that. So down to like, you know, various fittings and stuff like that. Uh, okay, so, but what's the, what's the big deal about it? I mean, in that, in all that work there, um, 
we're fitting things. We're actually thinking, okay, that's how it's going to be built. I go to the house and I see, okay, yep, yep, that's we got it. We're kind of reconciling back and forth and optimizing both the CAD. And I and if I don't like something, I'm going to change it because the build process actually works out. Whoops. And then there's another thing. We actually have inspection schedule. You cannot put any insulation or any sheathing on before you do this. So you have to sequence it in a particular way. And that affects how that's all that stuff you saw in there was organized. So it's an iterative process. It's like, man, it's, it's a killer. Now, architects don't do that. Architects don't do design. They didn't give you concept. They just give it away to the tradespeople to figure right. it out. But we're integrating. We're optimizing. So it's taking forever. But needless this, to say... So yeah. This is this is your your one hour or your fifty nine minutes thinking about the problem in the one minute like like I get it I get it. this yeah, makes yeah, complete it's sense and it's important so so we need that that's finished I'm a, hopefully I can get the electrical in within like one week it could be like two weeks more of CAD and after that we're like cleaning up everything to prepare the the package for the building inspector. Which can, can you give building yeah. inspector that is? I mean, I'm hearing that six months is a realistic timeline to give to to be in a position to come to Brian and say like, all right, let's go take a look at this lot. That I mean that that's what I'm hearing. No, oh, I hope sooner. Right. Yeah. Well, my my lease might be less than six months now. It's probably been about a month and a half so hmm. it's probably like five yeah so if we want to pursue it let's let's take a look let's ask some of the question let's go take a look at a lot and, and see if uh fits the criteria well i've i'd be happy to show it to you uh you want me to i can go there and take some pictures yeah maybe that'll be thing is, uh so then the question is okay so what's the labor looking like is that us trying to bring in 24 people for five days I, or would, are we doing something different? All those details have to be measured in here. Yeah, so but we don't have to do that to simultaneously. We don't like we don't have to have an answer for that simultaneously. We kind of do because that determines our selection of the lot. So let me ask you this, uh, Martin. Um, so why is why your would intention I go down there if we is if we can find out that oh well that's not a good lot then that's a wasted trip if we know that's not a good lot. If we did our due diligence before visiting the, the lot that we visited with Bob, I mean, then we would have known that, oh, this actually doesn't work. Stuff, I mean, stuff like that. We just want to be efficient about time. I think. But a lot of things yeah. take time to do the due diligence on. That's why it's like you got to go back and forth. Yeah. This is not. You're going to have. Sometimes we can't avoid it, the discovery process on. Yeah. You know, I think every. And hopefully we'll be able to. We're, you know, when we have customers, we're not going to say every lot that they find, we're going to have to have a tutorial on. No, no, no. You know, but, but you have to start start by saying which build model are you doing? Are you doing a thing where we're shipping you a kit and you build it yourself? Right. Is it the turnkey build that's on an open market? On an open market, you have none of that to worry. You show up, you see a thing on Zillow, you buy it. Oh, I see. So, so my question for you so is: all these things uh, matter. How we do it? Yeah. Uh, uh, is your intention okay? So I want to show let's say we hire model that we can get twenty four students on people. here and pay them. Okay. So my, I just have a question: Are you thinking that we would hire twenty four people and then you would train them? I'm a little bit confused about the different options well, around the labor. Yeah. So we don't have an answer for that. And the, the closest answer is, uh, John and I talked about it a little bit, is 12 people who we've worked with before, like I could name six people offhand right now from our previous work that would be good builders, right? So we go back to our former contacts, other people, people on YouTube or whatever, people who can already build, I don't have to tell them. I just show them the, the prints and say, oh, okay, yeah, got it. And then, uh, then perhaps we have 12 people that are doing this as a workshop, like as a standard swarm build model workshop. So perhaps uh, we're paying 50 bucks to the people that are the people that can build and maybe the people who are participating are actually paying because you're supposed to get a finished house out of that five days. But it doesn't work if you if you only get a small part of the way, they'll be pissed. So this, this matters, like is it going to be five days? 
or is it going to be some other model? So we have to consider that in detail. Which build model are we going to consider? For me, I, I mean, the five days is the ideal. Now we know that's hard to do right now in Kansas City. Well, what about Independence? What about some other town? Are they all like that? That their their building departments are all backed up. Uh, I don't understand what I read today. I read that that backups. Uh, I was reading about third party ins inspections today, and they were for some reason were saying that there's six month delays in project planning because of of inspections. I don't know what that means, but. Um, what? I yeah. That today. Uh, I hate to be a buzzkill, but like, what if the success story for the first house, for Brian's house, is a house is standing? Forget five days. Forget the perfectly replicable, re replicable model. We're talking about the first time you're going to do this for a cu customer, and we have ideal conditions to work out all these problems. And so, like. When we're talking about selling for labor and working around inspectors, I can brainstorm a million different strategies to address that. Like, if it happens in a month instead of five days, it's still a success story because you've taken CAD, you've taken a house, turned it into CAD, and then turn it into another house. And like, you're going to learn so much from that process that the next house that we, you know, it. this is MVP. This is not... I don't think we have yeah. to have the perfect perfect five day model for the first house, and we have the perfect conditions to do that with a customer willing to accept a lot of risk that nobody else would. And so, I mean, like we could yeah, think ourselves attractive. out of existence here. That's attractive. I mean, it it does it will be, um, yeah, and maybe we can fit in the, the whole schedule of the, all the pro, all the other builds. And we could still do one, two, three, right? So then let's look at what we tried to prove. So in one, we said we could just build it. Well, we're actually proving that we can just build it and we actually negotiated inspections, right? So yes, that's valuable. And it's a, it's a sale. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's, that's actually, huge. That's big. Well, well, no, no, no. I mean, I'm, uh, I'm assuming so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So in business, you just someone tries to give you money. A lot of times, it's like, okay, I'll I can do that for you. Yeah. Like well, maybe. We, so yeah. Can, so okay, keep going. Yeah. So so maybe we can do that. If costs costs are covered, we get paid. Uh, it will be hard to. To, uh, because it's not efficient, then the, the budget simply has to accommodate the inefficiency in it, right? Because I wouldn't want to do it for free because I, I don't get paid a lot until this. <laughs> um, this is the revenue model we're, we're developing right now. I've got a few, you know, a few true fans that are, you know, um, I'm running on fumes right now. We have the budget to, for the materials and all that to build that, that house. But we, I, personally, I need to consider economics as well. If that's that's addressed, and we know that it's not going to be as efficient, then yeah, we're fine. So, I also be able to rally a bunch of people in Kansas City around this whole thing mm -hmm. to like learn about what you're talking about, and you know, kind of like yeah. There's so much that would come mm -hmm. out. I mean, there, we could document it if we're going at a slower pace, turn it into marketing material. I mean, yeah, they just yeah. force for but the trees here, you know? right? But note what else, what else has to happen. So then there's going to be the second build. The second build, uh, eventually we have to get to to the model where, because we're trying to solve housing, so we're go, we're trying to get to the model where it's replicable, and when we have the 24 apprenticeships, we can we can have a customer every two weeks. And how do we do that? Well, my best my best model is is to put that on the market, put the house on the market on the open market. So we have to prove that part. Uh, so there will be a second build, absolutely. Sure. We cannot we, we cannot do one build. We got to do two. We probably got to do three. And the third one, we, um, I mean, we have to be at a point where we're comfortable that we can say, okay, yeah, we can just keep cranking these out, and we know we can sell them. So if we sell the second one, we have to do the third one, absolutely. Um, and that, that could, even if we do like one, 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 
possibly possibly good enough like I, I was hoping that we actually show the latter ones so that we can go to Kansas City even without a 24 captive crew uh, I was thinking along the lines of okay we're gonna do two and four in the su subsequent test builds before starting the apprenticeship um, which makes most sense like well, if we have the apprenticeship, we have 24 captive people. We, we, we actually only need to be, we really absolutely need to build only one at a time, right? Because we j can just say we travel to wherever, St. Joe, Kansas City. <coughs> yeah, we can do that. We can, uh, we can be building one at a time, uh, but we wouldn't be able to do one at a time remotely because, I mean, it will be harder. So I'm just saying, I'm like optimizing the, the hell out of this to make sure that we can build under all kinds of scenarios. Like say we got to travel to to Washington State like we had the offer. Well, we got to make sure that we can build the logistics and our operation can handle not one, but four or 16 houses, right? Um, otherwise, we just can't take on that project, things like that. Now, when, what's the minimum viable product for saying, oh yeah, we can launch the apprenticeship? Yeah, I think I think one, even one house would, would probably suffice. Um, so there is a, absolutely an advantage, like when you say, oh yeah, sure, we can get this thing standing, just like we were talking initially about the house in, uh, in Kansas City. So, so I, <clears throat> if I'm understanding where we are, uh, we're not at the point where you should be doing due diligence on a specific piece of land yet. You think it's realistic to get to that point within Brian's timeline. And like, would you agree to just like communicate better with us when you get to that point, I guess. Like, like that, that to me is a step forward to make sure that like Brian's not getting to get kicked to the curb Mm -hmm. And I'll be fine. I mean, I just I thought all the stars were aligning. Were like, I, I'm no, gonna I, make this yeah, decision yeah. once. I, I, I think I, they I'm are. Gonna make the decision in you know at least three years. Uh, so if I can help you out, Marchin, and then I, that would be cool. Uh, and if uh, so, I'm gonna just. Here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get the lot. I'll just say we're going to try and do something with it, and I'll tell them before. I guess I kind of have to feel somewhat confident that I can do something with this lot because they're saying, here's this lot. But I'll figure something out, even if... Well, I mean, the thing we can do in the background right now is just look at... I mean, Bob and I went and looked at it. Well, look at the let's look at the financial model for it, and whether what what do we want to do it with it? Like, are you buying it? Are you buying it someone else? Whatever. Just go go concretely. Here's the numbers for a scenario. Does that work out? That's part of the due diligence, because it's not the model where so so there's different models and there's going to be all kinds of models that we're going to be able to do, which is what you're talking about right now is one. Another one is just a plain extreme manufacturing workshop where we get skilled guides and a bunch of people who aren't skilled to do a complete build. And that may be, perhaps it's not in Kansas City because there's that three day delay and all of that. But I mean, all kinds of options. Uh, homeless housing, the, the whole blocks, like with a thousand people right off the street, all of that. Going to Ukraine, shit like that. I think so, the only way we can get away from like the delays is to have a direct partnership with the mayor and the city manager. And that's and so another they thing. Know so that's, what we're trying to do, and so they're it's they've now directed their staff yeah. to prioritize us. Yeah. So if we can do that, that'll be the ideal thing. So we can say, okay, now we're in, and we can negotiate that three-day delay, and we're gonna have the inspector there on at the end of that that third day and that's that problem is gone but that we have to we have to make sure that's possible because and that would also change what the numbers look like and by what method we're we're going to do the labor model but what we can do right now don't think that you know because it's going to be a pain in the ass or not like you know I, I do this all the time i i know that there's places where you can suffer right uh when 
things are going good or, or not. So I'm just trying to minimize potential suffering because we can get into a pickle where it's like, oh, now all of a sudden none of our people showed up. Like the, the worst scenario would be um, everyone shows up, we pay them. You know, like the, the scenario where, oh, we actually didn't pass inspection. We don't have uh, money to keep the people because we're paying them good money. The ho house is halfway done and it's like we ran out of money. You know, that kind of stuff. We don't want, we want to try to avoid it. So, so if we can <laughs> mitigate all the risks to that. But let's show it on paper that this, we have the labor and we have the, the money. And I think money and labor. Land, I mean, land is in there. That's part of the money. Speaking money of money, out. we're coming up on, I think, three weeks, two, two weeks since uh, you submitted that proposal. Brian, um, how does this work? Like, do they just text us and say, nope? <laughs> <laughs> don't put don't say put that out there put positive vibes about like <laughs> exciting phone call oh, that's yeah. like right. of course we're gonna get a positive <laughs> phone call and of course brian's gonna be building this house in a second um well i think that it would i think maybe a few of us maybe march in uh maybe i if i, I respond and march and just say hey i'd love you know if you could respond to that also and just be like because you're the you're the main event i'm just like i'm just kind of like your hype man same same so like we you know if you maybe just say hey it's i really i can't wait to um talk about this further or you know it'd be really great to work with you or you know just something you know where you're just did like, i respond saying nice. please let me know if you have any questions or i didn't even do that no okay that's a, at least say that. Martin, like, tell hey, tell me I, tell me if this helps you or hurts you, but like, you're you're terrible at managing communication. Like you, it, I I would love to help you to help you out. Uh, like do that because like, everyone who's not locked in their house working on CAD, it matters a whole lot. Right. Yeah. Help me out. Okay. I just didn't want to like, I didn't want to add shit to your plate. You know what I mean? Well, that's what I'm doing. I'm just trying to just make yeah. it through the day. Right. Are you also working on the house interior or no? Uh, uh, starting to, but see, I, I, last I worked on was finished the siding and like the front porch and stuff and all that. But right now, since I got into the cat, I've been at it since the war started. Yeah. Um, and that's you been a major that, distraction too. I mean, man, that thing yeah. saps me. I was just gonna say, I, I'd be happy to come down for a couple work days, and if you need an extra set of hands on the house, I don't know. I'm sure I know that you're gonna work. You would work me hard, so just. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the difficulty about that is if it's a time where it's like, oh, we're building something, and it's like, oh, we kind of have to figure this out, and you just kind of sitting around doing nothing for the whole time. That's why I was trying to spend all this time on the CAD to, to make sure we can do something. So that may be a possibility. Okay. Just putting it out there. I'm only yeah. uh, 45 minutes away. We're, we're uh, just putting good vibes out into the universe right now. Yeah. That's no, uh, I met a woman and she's very smart about subconscious vibes. You know, like don't, you know, we're going to get the phone call from Martin saying, how grateful he is with the opportunity to be a part of history, you know, well, and create the open source revolution. <laughs> I'm, he's going to give us maybe 350, 500, and then we're going to go on Gitcoin, I hope. I think Gitcoin will add another potential 50 to 100. Um, the open source crypto community is like yeah. the fairy godmother and father for open source ecology. Yeah. I. I, um, I mean, that should be a whole conversation, like maybe after we hear back from the Novo Foundation. Because yeah. I, I, I feel like all you would have to do is just kind of a sizzle hype video around a DAO and a, yeah. create a, you know, a, a, like a gatekeeping donation. So you'll be a member and act, you know, People are making a lot more money doing like less interesting things. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
And I'm, I'm actually talking to people at the Ethereum Foundation and Gitcoin, and I sent them the proposal. So I'm like starting to, you know, educate people yeah, about I mean, what you're doing. There's potential. There's definitely potential there. It's a question of execution and and time. Yeah. To actually do it. Um, Brian, my my question is more about like, how does this work? Like, I, I don't know anything about grants or donations and, and funds at, at this level. Like, is it literally just an email where they say they give you the decision? It could be. Okay. I, it's more likely that they'll <clears throat> call or or it could be an email. Got it. Okay. Um, but I'll see if I have his phone number and I'll give him a call because that that's usually where it happens is. You get a phone call and they're yes or no, basically. Okay. I mean, um, yeah. I, I, if it's on this level, typically, because we're talking to the the director of the foundation, so he's probably talking to his board and his you know stakeholders to. Okay. But he yeah. he's very excited about this. I mean, he he asked for it. So typically, whenever you ask for a proposal, you're going to do something. And the question is how much, and you know maybe he has feedback right. or whatever. But I think that um, I'm gonna maybe respond and just ask if we can, you know, to you know have a have a meeting like this. I think would be the best next step. That's what I originally suggested. So mm -hmm. I think that that will, we can add more color to it, and we can kind of. Let them ask questions and get to know each other, and mm -hmm. um, okay, makes sense. I I have two other uh, things I need resolved before yeah. we hop off this call. If you yeah. guys don't mind, um, Kirsten Dirksen responded to my like request. Hey, is that ring a bell or do you need yeah, more yeah. contacts? Okay, to come to um, the house. Probably. Okay. Yeah. No. That's that's all I'm asking is is yeah. how you want me to handle it because like I you know, um, she was talking summer, this summer time, uh, yeah, in terms of their like production time. planning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Possibly. Yeah. If the when did the open house? Up, well, that's the thing. When whenever this thing gets built and put on a website, and people okay. invite it. So that's the next step. I mean, that'll be a big step because then that's the time I'm gonna start making noise again. I like right. to make noise about <laughs> this, but right, right. now I'm just uh, down Periscope. Yeah, I mean uh, you sh you should come up for air periodically. It, it might be good for you to get into Kansas City like once every couple weeks and eat at Chipotle, right. just to get some fresh air. Yeah. Um, well, okay. You know, every day I go for a walk around the block. It's interesting. It's kind of interesting. Um. Yeah. And then the last thing I need resolved is um, part, when I was working on the grant, which I've ceased work on, um, one of the uh, one of the steps in that process was to register with SAM. It's like a, some acronym um, that gets you in the federal system for future grants and participation. Like you get assigned a number and all this shit. There's like unique identified information I need about, about the nonprofit and, and stuff. Um, I just got an email saying they're going to deactivate our account unless I complete that process. And so the simple question is, do you want me to complete it? And if so, we need to have a separate meeting about like getting me all that info. I don't think it's a big deal because we're not doing the grant application due next week. But if we want to do the phase two, which is due in October, we're going to have to go through this process anyways. So just well, I mean, we, you don't we have to decide it. now. We drop right. it. So I mean, I think we can drop it for now. I mean, we're not Great. moving okay. forward on it. And that's it. That, that's everything yeah. I needed resolved. Oh, I'm good on my end. Okay, so um, he said a few weeks ago. He said he in a few weeks he'd get back to us, and he said that six days ago. That was only six days ago. I know. Holy it shit. feels like it's been a few weeks. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> I am going insane. <laughs> so, right. I think Martin, if you want to respond to that one, I the last thing I said is thank you, Martin. Much appreciated. If you, 
you just want to say something, I think it. I think if I say something, yeah, yeah. I would be following up maybe in a week from now. Yeah. I, I don't. Yeah. I feel like he said a few weeks ago, six days ago, and that's. So he needs. You know, if you want to, we could just leave yeah. it be. No, I, I, I think can, I can give him a, a line uh, without even needing Jonathan's uh, services. <laughs> Don't 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 tell him about the don't tell him the fly joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What is it like? Is is laid back like a dead fly? What? I'm just laid back like a dead fly. Laid back as a dead fly. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah, I'm gonna wait another week or or at least. Yeah. Get this response, but you're welcome to. And um, so I'll I'll just kind of hold off on this lot until we are ready to talk about it again. But I'll see if I if I have to make any decisions about it or in order to get control over it, or I get pictures. I'll just yeah. I'm gonna be talking to them again soon. So. I think I, I think it's good enough. I, I would like to. I don't like feel like I have a good grasp of the labor issues. Um, I I can I can probably talk through that with you, um, if you if you want, like something more in depth. Yeah, just maybe at some point. Yeah, I mean, just the summary of it is it's, uh, it's a thing of turning a long, gruesome, debilitating, dangerous process into something that's fun. I lived that. So the notion first came about, you know, I was building the machines here, and it's long and it's dangerous. So part of it is that, man, how is how's anyone going to do it? Well, you got to turn it social and fun, and that's how you, you, you do the parallel build workflow and a lot of people, and you actually have fun. So that's the main thing. But the, there is a critical distinction there in terms of how that could be, be a bigger part of society, and that is if it is fun and easy enough, then you can have a lot of people participate. And the thing is that when there is a lot of people, you, you heard the saying, like, you know, whatever... Uh, many hands make it work light or whatever I mean it's absolutely true and it, and not only that but it could be used for production that's now done just by specialists and people who do that for their whole life and this is about opening that up to people to anyone um, from the organized from my perspective I can tell you what that means that means I'm out there suffering and freezing my ass off building that house and at height on ropes Etc. And it's like, it's dangerous, long work. And the difference becomes that, man, it's inspiring, fun, productive. Because if you do it by yourself or like typically how they do it, it's, it's hard work. For me, it means that I go, I go to KC and it's like, if I see it done in five days, for me, it's fun and inspiring. But if it gets way beyond that, then it gets to be another job. And it's like, man, I got to do that again. Um, so that's the difference. It's a big deal. And we figure out how to do exactly that. And that, that's how I think this business model can succeed so that people like the people in this, the students can not only be doing this hardcore, hardcore stuff, but they can, they also have then enough time to actually learn and continue their education. That's, that's a big deal. Nobody does that. You know, when you go to the trade school, you don't see any practice, anything practically. You, you just wait to get hired by some company, some other I mean, you don't, you don't do much practical. Here we're trying to do both, and so it's you, you it's learn how to deal. use the table of contents for the code book. Um, I I guess to to put your mind at ease about the labor thing, it, I'm confident that I can build a team, like or teach somebody else how to build a team and like turn this into a process iteratively, mm -hmm. um, and achieve your vision. Uh, you know, my the approach though is in small chunks right it, to create the vision you're talking about is going to take several attempts like several 
iteration. See, you know, that's that's why I differ because it's. I mean, I've done it so many times. I know it's doable. Like when we build this house, it's fifty people that are complete strangers that got together to build it and then celebrate it on the top of the roof. So, uh, it, it's almost like, oh man, do I have to do that again? Because I know what it can be, and it's not it's not that hard, but it requires that preparation. So, what does it include? All you need yep. is your damn instructionals and an absolute complete design. That's it. Now you need guides, but guides we can we can have. So it's not it's not that far out. Not far out at all. It just and has to have the proper preparation. That's all. Can you talk one last question about like the um, what education level different people? Let's say the twenty four people need to be at, and like compare that to like Habitat for Humanity. Yeah, I mean, I think Habitat for Humanity is a good, good comparison because you get college kids that never did any building. They go out there and build. I've done it when I was at school, and and you just swing a hammer or you cut things, you know, you cut power cords, <laughs> things like that. But it all works out because um, there's guidance. There's a the leader, crew leader, or several of them that just hey here you know uh, just keep whacking this hammer like this or do do a simple task and when you do something you can learn more complicated things but that's the whole thing like in a build all it is is like can you raise your hand here can you press on the screwdriver can you put it there and stuff like that. it's like none of it is particularly complex unless you're doing like craftsman grade work which uh, yeah there that exists in like you know like maybe fine finishing work or cabinetry or whatever but this is not not it we try to simplify things uh, as much as possible so so like you know for example the plumbing design there it's like there's nothing that's like hard to get to physically like difficult to assemble or whatever we're paying a lot of attention to that so that a novice can get at it and and do really well at it uh, so but the the idea what we just floated by was okay 12 skilled people all they need to do is pair up with one assistant like as as simple as 12 skilled people with one assistant or even like make it two assistants that would be perfect done i, I was wondering it. how many how few skilled people could you have well right now the hours i still think i mean Take the num. I, my estimate would be take 750 hours and divide that by the number. So it's eight hours a day. Eight times 12 is 96. Is nominally 100 hours per day if you got 12 people. So that's seven and a half days. So the question is, it's the trade off. Are you going to do it in five no, days? Like, you going to do it in 14 days? 30 days? I, I think I think six, Brian. Okay. With with six skilled people each managing four unskilled people, that's at the limit of what humans are capable of leading and managing effectively. How many, so each yeah. six would have three? Three to four, yeah. Okay, so how about this? Uh, and I like how it's a step up because and that, because that basically six encourages times. people, it encourages people to go through the training to be the right. six. Right. So, if you can get the six committed for a five-day build, a timeline, then uh, I think I can recruit the rest of people. Well, yeah, and now bring in Bob and, and get the inspector guy to be at the end of the day when we have to get inspected. So that's the other, that's the requirement. So get that and we'll do it in a second. I mean, uh, I actually have talked to the, you know, it's possible. Yeah, it's totally possible. Of course, it's possible. Um, but I like the six. It's only six times you, three because the six plus eighteen, right? So mm -hmm. three persons right. per. That'll be fine. Done in five days. That seems. Uh, it feels a lot less uh, overwhelming to think. Yeah. Okay, you have six people in the network that you feel confident in their capacity to to guide four people and to be in lock with you around the design well, and build. Well, those people problem. were, um, the six, three of them would be capable of guiding, three would be completely, could work on our own. 
but um, they, they wouldn't they might nece- not necessarily be a good guy but yeah i think when you talk about numbers like that yeah right so take those six and now it's only a matter of yeah that we can get in a second yeah so, so now just get a bunch of bodies along with that for the five days right right that's all and we can pay we pay the six people yeah the fifty dollars and we pay the other sure. people the 30 or 15 depending no, on pay us or i mean if it's depend- yeah i mean we could pay them or yeah or i mean if we, depending it depends on- if you want to frame it as oh here's an exciting experience where you get to build this entire crazy house um you know, part of history if you want to create history here's your chance to do it if you love your mom <laughs> i mean people did it here we got three <laughs> yeah. people to sign up and there yeah, were four right. guides. There was myself, Katerina, Gary, and and Jenna. There were four four leaders. Everyone else was yeah. from a wild crew that just showed up from six countries. So I'm just saying I think I can get people it's just a different approach, you know, whether you're not you wanna have to do like the Pull people from around the world and and make it to experience, or you just want to, um, you know, hire people who need fifteen to thirty dollars an hour sure. that so could yeah. eventually become an apprentice. Of course, in a serious way. So all we have to show is that there's a budget for that. Yeah. Well, if, if I'm if the house is being bought, yeah, then there would be a budget, right? Yeah, I assume so. <laughs> Okay. Well. So if we could make that happen, that would address everybody's need right here, around this little table. Yeah, we can. Well, we still have to finish the CAD and all that. So Mm -hmm. that's really the the bottleneck is that. Yeah. So you'll come back to us in a few weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I mean. I'm aiming to be done with that in two weeks, so, uh, yeah. So in two weeks, we're, we're at the stage where we're like, okay, let's talk about uh, getting those plans together for the building department, wherever that, wherever that is. So I mean, that's going to create that's gonna create a delay. Uh, and that's six weeks in Kansas City unless you just get that right. through right away on a fast track. And so, like, in terms of triggers for the next action, when you're ready to submit the plans, that'll create a six-week six-week mandatory delay. That's plenty of time to do due diligence on stuff. Yeah, and but there's a right. two weeks if you hire an engineer to check the structural and stuff the first time. We, right. It's a two-week Great. turnaround. So there's two weeks there and six weeks for codes through Kansas City. There you go. Yeah. But it could be more than six if they have beads with all kinds of stuff. Yeah. So it was eight I did, weeks. I did talk a, to uh, Craig recently from BNIM, and he asked about you. I said, mm-hmm. "Yeah, we're still we're still working on it." We're working on it. So it's what I hear is two weeks to do CAD, two weeks for an engineer, and six weeks for the planning. Yep. So we're. 10 weeks away from being able to have a serious conversation about a piece of land, setting a date for a build or something. Well, before when you submit the, submit the plans, you have to have a lot, because it has to be lot specific. So at that stage, when we go to the engineer in two weeks, we need to show them, hey, when we go to them, we're wasting time if you don't have a lot, because then we're gonna have to get a lot and go back and forth. Well, is it some part the plans, of the package, the lot, you know, utilities? Well, you show elevations. Things. You show here's the lot, here's how, where the neighbors are and stuff like that. They check all of that to make sure you're yep. legit. For this one, for this particular lot, that's going to be, that's going to take some, some analysis and conversation, I think. So I would add two weeks around the lot due diligence and kind of, Kind of thinking about that because maybe maybe we'll look at it and be fine, but I think we're gonna have to research it just like we did the last one. 
Yeah. Unless you go off-grid electric <clears throat> as one thing. That was, uh, I don't even recall if that was water or su electric or sewer, but those both have to be considered. Now, I think we, we can, can address the... You have to hook up no matter what. Say so what? I thought in the city you have to hook up to it no matter what. To sewer, it depends. It's one, that would be a variance if you don't. You have to normally, you have to get some variances if you're going to be off sewer. But off grid, I don't know what it really is. Can you just have a transfer switch, basically where you switch off and here's the, the off grid? Or do you need to be connected to the grid? They probably require that you are, you do need to be connected to the grid. That's standard. But it's interesting though, like about freedoms and stuff like, well, well yeah. how can you require me to connect to, and pay when I don't need to pay? Hmm. <laughs> no, you're right. No, that's, that's the whole, a lot of people that complain about that in DDS. Right. It's, I think it's that, that gets into the question of what we were originally talking about is how much do we want to push the agenda versus how much around things like, you know, what you have at your land versus what would be in city code and how much do we just want to get something passed? Because, and I asked Bob, well, yeah. what does he think? He says, yeah, push the agenda. Like you can, he wants so, right. But what's the advantages and disadvantages? Right. Yeah. So you delays for that. So not now. Only thing that possibly could say is, oh, we're like, off grid, but that's almost a moot point because all you need to do is a transfer switch and say, oh, okay, I just turned off the grid. Now, the only thing is that if you are on the grid, you're paying the utility whether you're using it or not. You got like this base baseline fee of like, I don't know, like 20 bucks a month that they just charge you for nothing for being connected. Right, but it wouldn't be 100, you know? It wouldn't be 100, yeah. And also, so, but what about so the biodigester? It's, a, it's probably illegal to have a biodigester and it's probably illegal to have composting toilets. You'd have to, you yeah. have to do, so you'd have to make design decisions about those two things. Yeah, I mean, for that, I wouldn't go there for the first one in Kansas City. What, what you want to do there is build a couple of regular houses and they're like, oh, okay, you're all right. And then you can have an easier time negotiating with them. Yeah. This plays into the menu of options the consulting team proposed for future down the road. Sorry, I did not read that. I mean, it, I don't think there's anything relevatory. Um, it is interesting to know how they sort of benchmarked us and came up with their, you know, financial model. But um, it. it, it it's good because it validates a lot of what we've all been talking about for a long time from an objective third party. So, that, you know, that kind of helps. So take a look. At your leisure. I know you're a busy guy. For fun. <laughs> yeah. When you're on the john. Whatever I'm laid back like a dead fly. Yeah. <laughs> or in an ample spare time. Right. Yeah. Speaking of that, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm going to have to run so okay. you go. Yeah, let's, let's quit. Uh, but yeah, it's all going to happen. It's just, we're getting there. Make sure you take care of yourself, Martin, man. Not healthy is to be sucked into Twitter and Ukraine and Canada. Oh, yeah, man. Mm, man. Mm. I decided to go very strict on waking up at 6, like 9 to 6 right now. So I'm doing that because uh, the war threw me over the edge. I started going nuts. So I said, hey, I need some regularity because uh, so I really, since last week, I'm going nine to six. I'm hoping to keep it for the rest of my life because, man, when you, I mean, I don't have any, uh, you know, my, I can completely set my schedule so I can be very irregular. And yeah, I, I did that all the time. Yeah. Uh, but actually with the war stuff, like that was so depressing that so, okay, I better keep all my mental stability by being regular. Definitely, I mean, there's a clear, clear difference in you know just waking <laughs> up with the sun and stuff. 
Yeah, yeah. that's good. <laughs> All right, yeah. Brian, any parting words? Nope. We're, uh, we raised $350,000 on our normal stuff. Um, and uh, I'm hoping to add to that with some of the things we're talking about. Congrats. All right, I'm signing off. Okay. All right. Thanks, Good seeing guys. you guys. Yep. Bye.